How are you? Good. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. I know it's during the middle of the day and sometimes it can be difficult to get off work for such occasions. <laughs> well, uh, what an exciting time. Um, I believe you have the Ascot, right? Aha, uh -huh, brilliant. Well, um, what a beautiful four bedroom home. Today I'm going to just be going through um, a little bit of essential information with you and we're going to get a contract signed up. Sound okay? Well, I have the floor plans with me also, so I am going to be going through with you very briefly um, where all of your doors and fixtures are going to be and then um, in a later meeting uh, we will be going through things like carpet choice and um, tile choicings for the kitchens as well. Yeah, we have a few different options. Um, once you've chosen, um, they will be placed within the build for when you move in. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, there are a few options that will be of an extra price as well. So you have a few different things to choose from. But we will go through that with you uh, at a later date. Yeah, so we can arrange that a little bit later. Okay. So, um, if you'd like to take your attention down to the table, I'm just going to go through the floor plans with you. Okay. Okay, so, here we have our reservation agreement that we will be going through a little bit later. But for now, I want to just bring your attention the actual home itself. So I know you have been to the show home before, haven't you? You have, so you have seen this home already. So, as I said, this is the Ascot. It is a four bedroom detached home with a garage. Mm-hmm. And this will be at the Edenhurst Grange plot, which is located in Liverpool. Wonderful. So as you can see, the Ascot is this green colour here. So your actual home is this one right here, number eight. So you have a south facing garden with a garage and also two car parking spaces and you are in fact on a cul-de-sac. So in order to get to your property you enter in here from the main road and turn right go all the way round and then turn right again to here okay so you have just one neighbour and then you are against the road here okay wonderful so going back to the property this is the house itself. I will give you a copy of this to take home today. If you have any questions at all, you can ring this number right here. Okay, so if we turn our attention to the back of this sheet here, we have our floor plans. 
I'm going to be going through the floor plans with you. So, here is your ground floor and then your first floor. This is the front of the house and then the back. Mm -hmm. So, so your front door is located right here and you enter the home into this long corridor-like hallway. If you carry on and turn left, you'll be in to the living room. It is a large living room with a wonderful bay window. Then, if you go back into the hallway, if you continue on straight, you'll enter your kitchen, dining and utility room. The kitchen has surface tops all round in an L shape here and then following on to your sink right here. You also have a five point hob here with an oven underneath. Here you also have room for a fridge freezer. Also in the kitchen and dining are patio doors leading straight out into the garden space. Then a door to the right which goes into your utility and down the stairs toilet and cloakroom. So the utility is fully equipped with a sink and a washer and dryer. Then the cloakroom just includes one toilet and one corner sink fixture. If you then return back into the hallway and you turn left, these are then the stairs to get to the first floor. You can also see that you have a garage here, a very long spacious garage, plenty of room to fit a vehicle. This garage does not have any internal doorways, so it can only in fact be entered through the front, but of course if at any later date that you wanted to create a door that could be a possibility for you, you could create a door right here. So at the front of the garage you have a large electronic garage door to open. If we then turn our attention to the upstairs, you enter the stairs here and then if you turn left first as you get onto the landing you will see bedroom 3. Bedroom 3 is the third largest bedroom. This is seen directly onto the front of the house with the roof to the garage as its main view. And coming out back onto the landing, if you were to then go forward, you enter bedroom one, the master bedroom. This bedroom also has a double window fixture and also has a space here for an optional built-in wardrobe. Now, would you like a built-in wardrobe? Is that something that you are interested in? Yes? Okay, wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a tick there just going to make a note for myself that the built-in wardrobe is approved. Wonderful. And that comes at no extra cost. Um, they are fitted with normal mirror doors. Okay, so continuing on into the master bedroom, if you then turn left, then you can see our ensuite here. The ensuite is equipped with a shower, sink fixture and toilet and it is quite a spacious ensuite. Then coming out to the master bedroom, if you were then to turn right, immediately to your left you have a small storage space. This 
is a combi boiler house so usually this would have a boiler in it but you actually have a full storage room right here then if you continue on and turn left again you would be back with bedroom 4 now bedroom 4 is the smallest of all four bedrooms but it is still with plenty of space and a single window right here if you then go back onto the landing from the fourth bedroom and turn left you'll see our main bathroom the main bathroom is equipped with a toilet, sink fixture and bathtub this is smaller than the usual family bathrooms however you are getting more space with the bedrooms as a substitute at a later date if you decided to downgrade to a three bedroom you could always extend the bathroom into the fourth bedroom and make it more of a lounge bathroom kind of washroom then if you come out to the bathroom and go left you'll see the second bedroom a second bedroom is a very interesting shape it has this kind of secret compartment right here as you come past the door and to the right this would usually be space ample space for a wardrobe because it does go quite deep so you're still able to open and close the door freely without any sort of restrictions then of course we have the large room again and then a single window okay so I'm just going to read to you the actual diameters themselves so starting with the kitchen and dining which is this room here we have 19 inches by 12 inches then the utility is 6.3 inches by 5.11 inches right here then the living room including the bay which is this bay window right here is 19 inches by 11.5 inches then the cloak room which is this small toilet room down here is 5.11 inches by 2.11 inches so rather small but still plenty manageable for reference if you wanted them in meters that would be the kitchen dining 5.79 meters by 3.65 meters the utility here is 1.9 meters by 1.8 meters and the living room including bay is 5.79 meters by 3.48 meters and finally the cloakroom is 1.8 meters by 0.9 happy with that and of course I'm going to uh, give you a copy of this so that you can use these handy measurements I know that at this point in time now that you've put your deposit down you will be um, ordering furniture or maybe moving in furniture you already have so I know that this can be quite useful to visualize where furniture will go and where it will fit okay Alright, moving on to the first floor. So, first we have the bedroom one here, which is 14.11 inches by 13 inches. Then, the ensuite is 8.8 .8 inches by 3.11 inches. Followed then by bedroom two, which is 12.5 inches by 10.6 inches. Then, bedroom 3 which is this bedroom here is 11.11 .11 inches by 8.2 inches then bedroom 4 this one here is 10.8 inches by 9.3 inches okay finally the bathroom which is this one right here is 6.11 inches by 5.8 and then again, for reference, bedroom 1 is 4.54 metres by 3.95 metres. The ensuite 
is then 2.65 meters by 1.2 meters. Bedroom 2, this one here, is 3.77 meters by 3.19 meters. Bedroom 3 is 3.64 meters by 2.48 meters. Bedroom 4 is 3.25 meters by 2.81 meters. And finally, the bathroom is 2.1 meters by 1.73 meters. Okay, happy with all of that? Great. We're going to go through exactly where all of your plug sockets are going to be. Okay, then in the living room, you have a plug socket and aerial right here. And then another plug socket here and another plug socket right here. Then following on into the kitchen and dining, you have two over the counter plug sockets right here and then another plug socket right here and then a plug socket right here for the fridge. Then in the dining room you have two plug sockets here and then a aerial on this wall. The utility comes with one plug socket right over here over the counter. Okay. Also with the garage you do have a six feature plug socket which is right here. Okay. Wonderful. Moving on then to the first floor, we're going to start off in the landing where you have one plug socket right here. Then moving on to bedroom three, you have a plug socket and aerial right here and then a plug socket right here. Okay, then bedroom one, you have a plug socket and aerial right here plug socket right here and then another plug socket here. Okay. Bedroom four, you have a plug socket and aerial here and then you have another plug socket here. And then finally bedroom two, you have your plug socket and aerial here and then another plug socket here and a plug socket here. Okay. You also have an extra plug socket right here on the landing and that is for the uh, hoover. <laughs> okay, are we all happy with that? You can add um, some extra plug sockets if at any time you feel like you um, especially request it. Um, if there's something that you are, you know, thinking, oh maybe, maybe I actually don't want the television on this side of the wall, maybe I don't want the walk-in wardrobe and maybe I want the TV here instead or um, if you wanted it on a separate wall for example, um, you need to let us know around three to four months before you actually move in because that's when we start to do um, all of the circuitry. Okay, wonderful. Well, then I will give a copy of that to you. Now I just quickly want to go through the uh, reservation agreement with you and just get some details down and get you to sign this, okay? Wonderful. Okay, so now we're just going to fill in the agreement itself. So I'm just going to have to take some confidential information from you, okay? Alright, so could I have your full name, please? Okay, and then the plot number is plot number 8. And I'll just write the address down. So your road 
address is going to be 123 Liverpool Road, Liverpool L193QZ. Okay, wonderful. And the date today is the 3rd of May 2020. Okay. So, at the time of entering into the reservation agreement dated, in compliance with the Consumer Code of Home Builders requirements, this document has signed and attachments initialed by the home buyer and the home builder to confirm that this information clearly represents the nature and content of the home being sold and supersedes any prior visual, written or verbal statements which may have been made or given. The purpose is to ensure that the home buyer yourself has a clear and fair understanding of what is being sold and has written commitment to them by the home builder ourselves. Any concern regarding the nature and content of the home being reserved should be raised in writing at the foot of the statement and clarified by the home builder and in any event no later than contracts are exchanged. So if we go through all of this and at any point um, you are not happy with something I'll make notes of that and then we obviously need to um, go through solicitors just to make sure that we have things clarified. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So, I'll just quickly write down the company information. Development name is Eden House Great. And do you live in Liverpool? No, so you're moving up here. Well, welcome. Obviously, you should know Liverpool has a very rich history, so there's much to do here. So it is a full bed to tap. You agreed three nine nine fifty. Okay. Reservation date. May twenty twenty. Uh, your anticipated time of building is October. First of October. Okay. So one. We will keep you updated uh, with the um, date of completion because that may be subject to change but we'll let you know with plenty of time and you let us know if there's any uh, problems and anything that we can um, you know, try and sort out for you. Okay? I do need to quickly ask you, um, are you interested in having the AstroTurf um, put down by us or are you going to be getting an external contractor to do that. We just need to know um, so that we can pre-plan that. Well, the price is um, £265 for the AstroTurf. Yes? Okay. I'll write you down for it.
we can ask you again um, close to the time just to make sure that you are happy with that okay so your lease is freehold not lease hold so we don't need to fill that in okay so is it just yourself that's buying it is okay so again your full name And your current address. Mm -hmm. Okay, town. Postcode. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just need to write down our solicitor details. Do you have your solicitor details with you? Good. Okay. Could you give me the name of the firm, please? Okay. And the address? Yep. Postcode. Mortgage provider details. Um, what is the name of your mortgage provider? Santander. Okay, the address. Mm -hmm. And their postcode. your solicitor and uh, mortgage advisor sorting that for you. So we can offer you insurance, uh, ground rent, uh, management services, window cleaning and gardening services. Okay, that's fine. These are just extra costs. <laughs> okay, so let me just read to you the conditions. So, the conditions are, in return for the buyer paying the reservation fee, the vendor agrees to reserve the property at the purchase price until the reservation expiry date. The buyer has the right to cancel the reservation at any time. If the buyer cancels the reservation, the vendor agrees to pay back the reservation fee, which is £2,000. Less any reasonable administrative and other costs incurred in processing and holding the reservation. The range of such deductions will be between £500 and £2,000. The reservation deposit will be deducted as part of the payment of the deposit due to exchange on, of contracts, which we haven't had the exchange of contracts yet. Um, that is when you will be giving your 10% but this £2,000 that you've already previously paid will be taken off of that 10% okay so the buyer agrees to notify their legal advisor and the vendor in writing prior to exchange of contracts what spoken statements if any they are placing material reliance upon the buyer is responsible for all costs and expenses incurred by them in the purchase of the property unless otherwise set out in the reservation agreement the buyer consents to the reservation agreement information 
to be used by the vendor to process the purchase and for use in customer surveys under the consumer code for builders. All such information to be applied in accordance with the Data Protection Act of 1998. So, I need to just take these for you. So, we have read, understood and accepted the conditions detailed on the reservation agreement. We have received, read and the information and details listed in Appendix 1 attached. We confirm that we have a copy of the consumer code for home builders in hard or electronic form, which I've already emailed to you, but um, we also have a package to give you with all of that information in. Wonderful. Okay, so what I need to do is just to sign out there for me. Okay, I'll just eat it. research products and or services that may be of interest to you from us. Okay, I recommended supplies. No, okay, that's fine. Our full privacy policy can be found at, I'll just put the address here. Provide 
hard headgear and um, fluorescent jackets and a steel cap toe boots as well um, purely for safety because um, there could be some falling rubble or... okay so the details of how questions will be dealt with and who to contact during the sale, purchase and legal completion of the home that is myself okay and you have my information advice to appoint a professional legal advisor to carry out the legal formalities and to represent the home buyer's interests you already have a solicitor wonderful and finally an explanation on the system and procedures for receiving handling and resolving home buyer services calls and complaints which we all have um, in the booklet as well so i'll pop that together for you so basically, um, the home buyer's service course is when you move in, which won't be for a while now, if at any time you have any um, problems, so whether that is with the water supply, um, something electronically is faulty, um, there are any problems with tiling, paint finishes, um, flooring, if um, you know something's not quite right, or maybe... Um, you ask for AstroTurf and it's not been provided um, you're getting, you know, some sort of um, problem with Wi-Fi or anything um, we can go through disputes with that um, to try and alleviate the issue as much as we possibly can um, of course, things like Wi-Fi we can't actually do anything about um, but all of the information about the general um, broadband speeds are in the information in the package if of course you are not happy with that at all um, you can contact broadband provider you can contact broadband providers um, who may be installing some maybe stronger uh, Wi-Fi in the area if not of course you do have the buyout before if not if you aren't happy with that of course you do have the option to cancel the reservation before the exchange of contracts occurs so it's just really important that you go through all of this package make sure that you're happy with broadband speeds any of the water supplies, boiler, heating, um, any of the layouts, anything that you specifically are interested in, make sure that you go through everything, make sure that you're 100% completely happy um, before you exchange the contract because at that point we can no longer give you the reservation fee back, okay? Oh, wonderful, okay so everything. Um, I'm just going to go now and prepare your package for you to take home. Um, again, if you have any problems at all, please feel free to pop back in at any time. Make sure that you go around and uh, see a lot of the Liverpool area, get familiar to where you're going to be living and potentially working. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. So again, if there's ever any problem, feel free to come in, or alternatively, uh, you can just phone me on the number in your package provided. Alright, I'll just go and get that sorted for you, and then you'll be on your way. Alright, thank you very much.